This is a Discord bot running on a 3DS. It could send messages and it could receive messages. I did this by using WebSockets, TLS encryption, and a cache system. If that didn't make any sense to you, then I'll be going over it in this video. But first I have to say, I generally only use this client with a bot account. Doing this with a user account is against the Discord TOS. We need to understand the Discord API. The main protocols being WebSockets, HTTPS, and JSON. These protocols also use other protocols such as TLS for encryption and TCP for sending data over the internet. WebSock is very useful for sending information and getting information in real time. HTTPS is the main protocol for the web. The client, which is usually the web browser, would send out a request to the web server and then the web server would send back the data. But with HTTPS, the client has to send a request to the server to do something. However, with WebSockets, a web server can just send you data without asking for any new messages. My Discord client wasn't the first on the 3DS, but I believe it was the first to use WebSockets. Other clients simply spammed Discord's API with many requests, which is much simpler on the client side, but very inefficient on Discord's end. Plus, they were typically used with a user account. With all that combined, it was no wonder that many people got banned for using them. Some people thought that I said that my client doesn't get people banned, but I never said this. The main difference between other clients and mine is that my client only sends requests when sending a message or getting the message history from the past. I definitely recommend you use a Discord library. My Discord library was made to be modular. At first I used the HTTP library that was part of the 3DS Homebrew SDK, but Discord would keep rejecting it and send back a bunch of errors. So I made my own because the library I usually use, which is curl, isn't available through the 3DS Homebrew SDK. And for WebSockets, I use WSLA. This is a library that requires the use of callbacks to access things like TLS and HTTPS. Now we need to keep the connection open. And to do this, there are a number of tasks that we need to do at a specific time. So you need a timer system running in the background to achieve those tasks. There's something on the SDK called the main loop. This is where code runs over and over again. And in this loop, you can also do a bunch of other things. The polling of the WebSocket connection and also the timer system. But now you should have a connection that's kept open. After that, you will need the client to listen to the Discord events. This is where you'll get your data and there will be a lot of data. Most of that data, you don't need right away. But Discord often isn't going to give you the same data more than once. So you need to store it somewhere. As a temporary solution, I used the 3DS's memory. At first, I used a hash map because accessing data from one is pretty quick. However, I would quickly run out of RAM. So I used a bunch of linked lists, which is slower when accessing data and dealing with lots of data, but it used less memory. So it was good for this temporary solution. Temporary solution in air quotes, by the way. The 3DS had 128 megabytes of RAM, and homebrew apps mostly have access to 64 megabytes of it, or 80 megabytes with tricks, and so I had to do a bunch of optimizations on everything. But it'll always run out of memory at some point. It will happen faster if you're on more servers, big servers, active servers, or even worse, lots of big and active servers. A more permanent solution would be some cache system that stored the data off the memory when it's not needed and stream that data in from the SD card in the background. I really wish I got to add in async and multi-threading as that would have really helped with streaming in the data from the SD card and dealing with the many background tasks. However, a big issue I found was that threads on the 3DS work differently than threads that I normally work with. Meaning I can't just reuse my normal code that uses multi-threading. From what I understand on the 3DS, you have to yield and let the 3DS switch threads. This is called cooperative scheduling. On most operating systems and modern CPUs, they will every so often interrupt the process to make the decision to switch or not. And this is known as preemptive scheduling. Why does the 3DS use cooperative scheduling you might ask? I believe it's because it saves time that can be used doing the task instead of interrupting said task. But the downside to this is that the task could fail to yield and cause a deadlock. The 3DS has two cores, four on the new 3DS, but one of them is used up by the system. So on the original 3DS, you really only have one thread running at a time. Looking back, I'm really glad I took the chance to do this, as it taught me a lot about developing software with very limited hardware. I had to stop doing this, as I already proved the point I wanted to make, which was getting my Discord library working with something strange. Going further than that would have required more work than it's really worth, especially considering the fact that if you really wanted to run a Discord bot, there are other better options out there like the Raspberry Pi. But I want to know what you think, so write it in the comments and I'll be reading it. Check out this video I made about the Minecraft compass recreated in TypeScript. And don't forget to subscribe.